Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, we are going to stick to Sweden and we're going to return to a brewery that has featured on the channel a good number of times before. So I've had some really nice beers from these guys over the last kind of year and a half or so and this brewery are known mainly for their New England hazy IPAs and also the big fruity juicy sours, the Bellina Vices and the Gozes and things like this. And if you're into those styles, then this is a brewery that you definitely want to keep an eye on. These guys are doing some of the best beers in Sweden at the moment, in my opinion at least. So um, yeah, for this review then, we are going to return to Strömstad, which is a bit to the north of Gothenburg, Jutebori on the west coast, quite close to the Norwegian border. It's supposed to be a very picturesque little fishing village, of course, and somewhere that I do want to visit. But we're going to have a look at yet another beer from Fermenterana, or the Fermenters, as you might call them in English. So the beer we're having a look at today is the Oat Cream Baker. It comes in at 8% ABV, and this one is another New England hazy. Uh, Imperial Double, whatever you want to call it, IPA. So this one should be a little bit different from the last ones we've had because it's got a bit of lactose in it. And if memory serves me correctly, this is the first one I've had from them that has lactose in it that's been an IPA. We have had lactose, I think, in the Gozes and Bellina Vices and things like that that we've had from them before. But uh, yeah, like I say, this brewery are very well respected in the New England IPA and the Fruity Sour category. So they're definitely worth checking out. But this particular beer was released as part of the local Local Osmoskalig assortment through Sistembolaget here in Sweden for July of 2021. But uh, yeah, let's see how we get on with this one then. An 8% New England uh, hazy imperial double, whatever you want to call it, IPA. So yeah, let's crack on then. As always with my reviews, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done from Fermenterana before and we will no doubt add more to that list in the near future. I do keep an eye on the beers that these guys are releasing every month but there's all the usual social media down there. If you want to see more reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country, city, state, county, province, prefecture, whatever it is you happen to be interested in. Do check out the playlists of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Swedish beers I've reviewed for you. That's constantly being added to and as always please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review it's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely hugely appreciated so anyway to tell you a little bit about fermenterana once again then on to my brewery notes so fermenterana as I've told you before, are based in Strömstad, and the company was founded by Niklas Aronson and Anna Kleissen, who founded the company together back in 2018. So, like I say, very close to the Norwegian border up on the west coast, but apparently um, Niklas ordered a beer in a bar one day without really knowing what it was, and this turned out to be the Tropic Thunder from Dugisbrugge, which is kind of... I guess, the cult classic sour beer in Sweden. So that was his first introduction to what craft beer could actually be. But on the other hand, Anna has had a long interest in things that ferment, and she also runs the restaurant Costa's Trade Order. And um, she's got, you know, she's got history with fermenting lots of different things, sauerkraut, um, sourdough bread, you name it, she's played around with fermenting it actually. So quite different journeys into the world of uh, brewing beer. But the brewery started out with a small 200 litre brew kit and tanks in late 2018, and they actually took a break to expand the company after their beers had been very well received at different festivals. But these days they both a facility a new facility with two 500 litre brew kits and a total tank capacity of 17,000 litres and they had been aiming to produce 50,000 litres over the course of 2019 but they now say that they have the equipment to brew 250,000 litres of beer per year. So yeah we're seeing an increase in output from these guys actually. But according to Untapped they have produced 115 different types of beer as of July 2021 and as I mentioned earlier as well these guys are best known for their New England hazy uh, IPAs, but also for the big fruity juicy sours actually. It tends to be every month that they release, um, quite often in the last few months I've seen them release a sour beer. And um, they've got the Masquerade series, which is very good actually. I would recommend that you try those if you see them. Um, and those tend to be like Bellina Vice. I think it's usually Gozes they are actually. So big juicy fruity Gozes. They've got a few, I think they've released a couple of Bellina Vices as well. But they tend to release one IPA and one double IPA. So uh, yeah, definitely worth checking those out if you get the chance. And I find that the Fermenterana 
New England IPAs have this lovely softness to them actually. I have had one that was more bitter recently, um, but yeah, from Enterana, New England IPAs for me always have this lovely kind of softness and uh, softness and smoothness to them, I think. But this one should be a little bit different with the, uh, the oat cream and lactose and stuff in it. But um, yeah, that's all I can really tell you about from Enterana for the moment. Like I say, if you love those fruity, juicy, sour beers and your New England IPAs, these guys are one of the best breweries in Sweden at the moment for these two uh, style brackets. But uh, yeah, if you want to learn more about this brewery, you can check out the brewery website. You can follow them on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with all the latest goings on. And you can, of course, check out the Rate Beer, Untapped and Beer Advocate pages to learn a little bit more about all of the different beers that they've done. But that is it for your history section in this video. So let's get on and have a look at the beer itself. So as you can see, we've got some more of that wonderful artwork that we've become accustomed to with Fermenterana. I do, I keep saying this in every video, but I do wonder if it's maybe Anna or Nicholas themselves that designed the artwork in this one. But um, yeah, their artwork is always pretty cool. You always get an animal um, doing something kind of unusual on the IPAs. The, the sour beers tend to be like a sort of person with like a fruit head or something like that. But uh, yeah, the style of artwork that these guys have um, is absolutely awesome and one beer I really would recommend that you try from these guys if you get the chance is the one that has the hop flower on it I think that one is their kind of I think they're trying to make that like their sort of core range IPA and I think it is just called IPA but that was one of the first ones I reviewed from this brewery but definitely um, have a go at that one if you see it but you can see on the back of the can here there is the fermenterana symbol the old school sort of fermentation vessel and I always liked that I was pointing out last time how I had the little airlock on it I'm not sure how well that's showing up on the camera there you can see the can of course is sweating a little bit because of how uh, wonderfully warm it is in the Swedish summer but like I said earlier this one is an 8% New England double IP and the hops in this one I have them uh, here and um, this one is hopped with Galaxy, Idaho 7, Mosaic and Citra. So yeah, Galaxy from Australia, all the rest are from America. I'm pretty sure all of these have about 14% alpha acid. Galaxy gives you that lovely kind of pungent passion fruit with a good mango and pineapple note. Idaho 7 gives you those lovely soft tropical notes, mangoes, apricots, papayas and things like this. Mosaic is a nice kind of tangerine or, or, uh, kind of orangey note to it and Citra as we know, big big mango component. Sometimes a bit of grapefruit then you get quite a citrus see uh, kind of note from a lot of lemon lime and kind of things like that but uh, yeah lovely lovely hot bill on this one but as we said the main difference between this one and the ones that we've had previously from fermenterana is the fact that it's got uh, lactose in it and I guess when they're saying oats maybe partly that will be oat cream so this one I think might be a little bit thicker than the ones we've had before the, the previous New England IPAs have always been kind of nice and soft and bready but quite well balanced at the same time but yeah this beer cost me somewhere in the region of 50 Swedish kroner. I'm pretty sure it was 50 that I paid for this. Could potentially be 55, but we'll say 50. So that translates to roughly five euros, um, about four pounds 50 sterling, and uh, I guess somewhere in the region of six American dollars. So 440 milliliter can this one, and uh, that's a fairly standard price for a Swedish brewed uh, New England IPA, and released, as I said, as part of the Local Osmoskalik Assortment through System Bolaget for July 2021. Gold top. Um, but I think it's about time to get this guy out and get on with the glass, with the, the tasting. Get on with the glass, no, get on with the tasting. Yeah, so let's get this guy out and into the glass. That would make more sense. That would make better English, wouldn't it? Yeah, so let's go for it then. 8% New England Hazy Imperial Double, whatever you want to call it, IPA. From Fermenterarna in Strumstad. Uh, to the north of Gothenburg, close to the Norwegian border, the oat cream baker. Yeah, lovely. There we go. Let me just line that up again. There we are. So, yeah, as you can see, and as you would expect, then this beer, mm, it's very lovely and bright. This one. So, before the head disappears, I would say that this beer is poured with somewhere between a quarter and a one third finger of a frothy, I would say, perfect white head. That is fading away to just be a very, very thin foamy layer at the moment now but yeah um, it's poured with a lovely kind of perfect white head I would say it's not even creamy absolutely perfect white on this one and you can see that it's got a lovely very bright yellow color to it this one it's not quite as bright to the naked eye as it's appearing on the camera I can see it on the viewfinder there to you guys it's appearing like a very bright yellow to me it's a little bit kind of duller than it's appearing to you but um, yeah it reminds me 
of a kind of mango juice, I would say. I always like comparing the New England IPAs to different fruit juices because that's just what their appearance really reminds me of. But this one certainly looks a little bit like a kind of mango juice. So remember that the colour of your beers are dependent on one, the type of malts that you use. This usually determines the magnitude of the colour. Two, the length of your wort boil is also going to play a role. Uh, the longer you boil the wort, the more the sugars caramelise and thus you get a darker colour of beer. A New England IPA such as this one will undergo a wort boil of between 60, you know, somewhere around 60 to 90 minutes. But uh, yeah, any adjuncts and barrel aging, of course, will play a role in that as well. But uh, yeah, the level of haze in these New England IPAs is determined by the oat and the wheat content. The yeast, of course, can play a role in that as well. And that just varies from brewery to brewery and even recipe to recipe. There's not really a rule about that. You know, theoretically, as you go up the alcohol scale, you should get a little bit more, but that's not always the case. The level of haze in this beer, though, I think that is a little bit more soupy and gloopy compared to some of the other ones we've had from Fermenterana, but it's certainly not the soupy and gloopiest of uh, New England IPAs that I've come across. But yeah, one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass, a few little ones going up towards the bottom of the head, but I think there's not much else we really need to say about the appearance of this one. It's exactly what you would expect from a New England IPA. So um, yeah, let's have a closer look at the aroma then and see how we get on with this one. I'm very, very curious about this beer, I have to say. So, yeah, you can smell a slightly bigger oaty presence to this, that's for sure. So this one definitely smells a lot creamier. I mean, what you would normally find with the Fermenteranas, and again, I'm generalising with this, this isn't every beer, and I've not tried every New England IPA that they've done, but um, you still get that soft, fresh, fluffy white bready note out of this one that I would say is, the kind of, is one of the trademarks, if you like, of Fermenterana. Um, you get a little bit of wheatiness there as well, but I think the wheatiness is a bit toned down in this one. You're not getting the same kind of wheaty bite that you sometimes get um, from these beers, but the oats, you can smell just the thickness of the oats in this one. So this is interesting. They're maintaining that, you know, barley malt, wheaty bready base to the beer, but the oats seem as if um, they're just a little bit amped up a little bit. The lactose, of course, is quite difficult to, te to detect and the aroma will no doubt kind of get it from the mouthfeel and the flavour to a degree, but the lactose and the oats, I think, will have some kind of, they will be interacting with each other. There'll be a bit of symbiosis, um, symbiosis, I should say, going on um, in this in this particular beer. But the more that you sugar it up, actually, when you sugar the beer up a little bit more, you start to get a little bit more of the wheaty bitiness out of the beer and you can smell a little bit more of a kind of bread crusty element to it but the oats are certainly quite noticeable in this one so yeah the backbone of the beer smells like it's a nice kind of soft uh, you know soft fresh white bread as i said there's a wee bit of a bread crusty note in there you can smell that softer wheaty element in there too bit of a bitiness at the back of the nose then a big oaty creamy character out of this one and um, there's a wee bit of a sweetness to it you know perhaps a little bit of a you know, a kind of Werther's original sort of thing, but I think that's a little bit less pronounced in this one as well compared to what we've had from uh, previous releases from these guys. This one definitely seems a little bit more, you know, straight up the three pinnacle, the, the three, uh, the three pillars, if you like, of the New England IPA, the barley malt, the oats and the wheat. It seems like it's a little bit more straight shooting in that sense. It doesn't quite have the sweetness. As I've told you previously, I think there's six different directions you can do with a New England IPA. They can be a bit, they can be more kind of farmhousey and yeasty. They can be rye leaning and grainy, um, such as, you know, uh, the Alchemist beers. They can be a bit more wheaty and bitey, oaty and creamy, um, you know, barley malt leaning and bready, and they can have a little bit, of, some of them can have a little bit of a brown sugary note to them as well. This one smells as if it's going to be a bit more kind of, you know, oaty, wheat, uh, wheaty, and, um, and, you know, barley malt leaning, but potentially the yeast will play a little bit of a role in this as well. So I like how this, um, I do like how this uh, how this goes together. But yeah, the aroma of this one on the malty side of things is um, pretty nice. But, you know, kind of what we've, it's got the trademark soft breadiness, like I say, but definitely more oaty compared to others. But yeah, let's focus on the hoppy side of things then. So, um, yeah, the hoppy side of the beer um, it's kind of interesting. I think the green component is a little bit, um, a little bit, you know, not quite as pungent as we've had from this, uh, from the brewery in the past, in fairness. 
and maybe that's particularly for this recipe but yeah you can certainly get a wee bit of green off this one you do get a little bit of a kind of there's a wee touch of earthiness in there which will most likely come from the mosaic you do get a nice fresh floral arm, uh, aromaticity to this one and i wouldn't say that it's so deep this one that the floral aromaticity i don't think comes out as being madly deep in this one when you sugar the beer up a little bit more you do get a little bit more depth to the floral aromaticity and a wee bit more pungency but the floral notes I think come across as a little bit just more kind of fresh in this rather than anything else. You do get a nice kind of soft grassy component in here as well, like wet, fresh cut grass. It's kind of got that type of uh, that type of vibe to it. But um, yeah, the green component in this one doesn't strike me as being so pungent compared to some of the other ones. Now the things to remember with a New England IPA, of course, is that they are heavily dependent on late edition hops. Late edition hops tend to give you um, more flavour. And aroma the early edition hops are the ones that give you the bitterness so i'm curious to see how bitter exactly this beer is going to be but uh yeah i think you know probably if it's a double ip we're talking maybe 40 ibus or uh, or something like that but this beer doesn't smell as if it's really going to be that bitter you can usually tell to a degree how bitter a beer is going to be but like i say the green component in this one the floral characters especially which would usually be the indicator are they feel a little bit softer in this one i have to say but i mean it does smell like a really nice beer on the fruity side of things though it is what you would expect if you know these hops i mean you can smell a little bit of the more kind of pungent passion fruity note in there that's going to come from the citra and from the galaxy to an extent um you can smell the really nice juicy tropical notes in there and so citra um citra and galaxy will contribute to that but the idaho 7 i think will be the one that holds it together so there's a big mango component for me i do get a wee bit of a kind of pineapple note in there as well. I do get quite a strong pineapple and I think both Idaho 7 and Galaxy are going to contribute to that. But the thing the thing that's interesting as well is you do get quite a little bit of uh, mosaic out of this one. You can smell a little bit that big, juicy, slightly more oily tangerine component from the mosaic coming out of the beer. So that's another interesting takeaway, I would say, from this particular beer as well. Um, but it did say, I think, that they had used mosaic as a cryo hop in this so potentially uh, i don't know when you add cryo hops in the boil actually but potentially that's the reason why the mosaic the tangerine oranges still remain quite prominent in this one because you would think with three tropical leaning hops um you would get you know it, it would potentially be leaning more, more towards that but i still get quite a wee bit of the mosaic out of this one the other thing is the mosaic might have been used as the early edition hop as well um so yeah, not 100% sure about that. Um, but yeah, it still smells very, very nice. As I say, I, I get a lot of tangerine out of this one and then that mix of different tropical fruits in there. Like I say, um, a bit of passion fruit, a bit of the stronger passion fruit, some nice, quite a bit of mango component as well, but a bit of pineapple and you know, there's a few apricot -y elements in there as well. But uh, yeah, as I say, if you know these hops, um, this beer is giving you exactly what you would expect from them and it's got the trademark um, soft breadiness and stuff of fermenterana as well but let's get the rest of it in the glass and i think it's about time that we should try this one then so yeah this is the oat cream baker eight percent uh, new england hazy imperial double whatever you want to call it ipa from fermenterana in strumstad hop with galaxy idaho 7 mosaic and citra uh, with lactose in it this time which is a little bit unusual as we say for um an IPA from Fermenterana. But let's go for it then. Slanger, Skull and cheers. Yeah. Once again, that's a really, really damn solid beer from Fermenterana. These guys um, know what they're doing. Now I would say this one is a bit sweeter than what we've had from them previously. Definitely a little bit sweeter. And it's interesting because I wasn't really picking that up on, um, on the aroma. So this is one of these beers, you know, for the most part, you know, if the mo we're talking very subtly here, if we, you know, for what they're, in terms of the general flavour, you know, the aroma matches the flavour quite well. But it's more the makeup of the malt base. I would say the makeup of the flavour of the malt base that doesn't quite match the aroma in the in the same way and that's kind of interesting for this beer I would say. Mm. 
The other thing I'm noticing about this at the start of it is that it has a really nice, just juicy component to it. This one's really got a little bit of slickness and um, and things to the, the juicy part of the beer. But that's uh, absolutely lovely. This beer gets a big thumbs up from me, actually. This could be one of my favourite ones from uh, from Enterana. But, you know, I say this, I've had quite, I've had a lot of good IPAs from these guys. And if someone asked me to pinpoint a favourite, I would struggle because they've all been, you know, really solid quality, actually. Although I would potentially go back to the one with the hop flower, the IPA, just because that was one of the, that's the first one that I kind of remember, to, uh, to be honest with you. So yeah, I probably would go back to that, and that would be a nostalgia-based choice. But yeah, you know, try the you know try the IPAs from these guys. I don't think it really matters what one you get, to be honest. But um, this one is really damn solid. So yeah, thumbs up to um, to Fermenterana once again. A little bit sweeter, as I say, than what we've had from them previously, but equally as good, just as good as what we've had. So let's try and break this one down for you a little bit then, and describe the flavour properly. So, backbone of the beer then, you can feel that nice, soft, white bready character just going right across the middle of your palate there. We're talking both middle third of your palate and back third of your palate, and that's really nice. Very soft, white bread, and it feels a little bit lighter. It doesn't feel quite as thick and, uh, and fluffy as we'd had before, in a sense, but yeah, nice kind of, um, as I say, nice kind of soft, white bready character in there. Um, and you can feel, it feels a little bit crisper almost than what we've had from them uh, before actually. But yeah, I do wonder if I'm drinking this beer just slightly cold. I think it's it's kind of just out the fridge and the fridge was about 8 degrees. So yeah, maybe it's just a little touch cold but then my glass is sweating because of the, the heat of the Swedish summer, as we say. But um, yeah, this is very, very nice in that sense. So nice kind of almost slightly crisper, but still quite soft white bready base in there. If you go to either end of that middle third of your palate, you get a wee bit of a bread crusty note there, but you can also feel the, um, as I say, you can also feel the kind of soft, but still quite smooth wheaty layer sitting on top of that. And that is very, very nice. But sitting on top of that, of course, you get a lovely, um, you, you can feel the big OT character in this one and also the lactose as well. I think the lactose is probably smoothing out and stopping the bread feeling quite as fluffy as it is, but the oats definitely sit on top of the kind of wheaty layer and you can feel those being a little bit thicker. And I think the lactose is sort of just adding to the creaminess of it. This, um, the level of sweetness that you get in terms of brown sugar is quite um, interesting. I do wonder if part one of the malts in this is Golden Promise because it just seems very, very familiar. But yeah, it's interesting for sure. There is, if you go on top of the kind of oaty, lactosey layer, and as I say, the oats, it does it. The thing that's interesting with this is it actually feels more smooth. It doesn't feel madly thick, to be honest with you. I expected this beer to feel a little bit thicker than it does, but it doesn't. It does feel thicker than what we've had from them before, in fairness, but just not, not as much as I expected. So I think they've got this. Quite nicely balanced. I don't think they've gone too wild on the lactose in this beer, but yeah, you can feel that the oats and the lactose just kind of mix together, and you can feel that sitting on top of the kind of softer wheaty layer actually, which is nice. But sitting on top of that, you have the um, sitting on top of that, as I say, you get a kind of circle right in the middle of your palate, and when it's eight percent you should expect this. That's when you get a little bit of the kind of brown sugary element to the beer. You've got that kind of Werther's original butter candy, butterscotchy type thing coming out of this one. So um, yeah, I do like how that um, how that goes together in this beer. So um, yeah, you can feel that just, you know, it feels a little bit more concentrated and sweet in the very middle of your palate, maybe a straight up caramel there, but when you move further out from that, it really is a more kind of Werther's original butter candy type thing. And potentially you get a little bit of a biscuity character the further out from that that you go. So yeah, I can certainly appreciate that about this, but I think that covers the middle third of the palate quite well in this one. The OT lactose layer isn't madly thick in this. But yeah, let's move on to the back third of your palate then. So border region between middle third and back third of your palate, again, you get a nice little bit of bready build up 
there you can feel that and there's a wee bit of the bread crust you know but then in the back third of your palate you can feel that soft um, you can feel that that soft white bread layer you can feel a little bit of the wheat the wheat incidentally gets a little bit bitier towards the back of the palate too but then on top of that you can you can feel a little bit of the oat and the the lactose kind of creeping in there but on top of all of that you can feel the more airy yeasty type uh, qualities uh, coming out of the beer so yeah you can feel that the back when you're at the back of the palate in this one you can feel the flavor is a little bit taller and then as you come further forward it condenses down and then as you go into the middle third of your palate it's even more kind of squashed together and condensed but i think it works and um, it does work very very nicely in that sense so yeah i think it, it goes together very very well so yeah thumbs up to uh, fermenterana for the malt base in this one i think they've, they've they've sort of added the lactose into it and it's given the beer a little touch more sweetness but they haven't gone wild on it and i think that that stands the beer in good stead i would say but on the hoppy side of things then back corners of the palate you've got a nice little bit of uh, you have got a nice little bit of an earthiness in there and as you move further forward you can feel that the beer just develops a little touch more um you can feel that it develops a little bit of a herbal quality but then it quite quickly moves towards being more kind of floral and aromatic and it doesn't as i say the floral aromaticity as i picked up in the aroma doesn't come across as being too deep or too spicy or anything like that it just gives the beer a nice little element of freshness but then round the front curve of the palate the beer is distinctly lighter and more uh, more grassy it's kind of like a wet fresh cut grass type aroma and flavor that you're getting off this one i should say i don't know why i do that in these videos i mix up uh, saying aroma and flavor all the time it does my head in it does my books in i should say but yeah But yeah, very, very nice this one on the green component. Um, as I say, not doesn't strike me as being as bitter and things as uh, some of the other ones we've had from Ferment around in the past. But yeah, this is a lovely, um, lovely tasting beer, this one. So yeah, big thumbs up to them for the green component there as well. I'm starting to notice that on the further you go into the aftertaste with this one, you actually really start to feel, particularly on the front half of that middle third of your palate, you can just feel that sort of creamy note. It's almost like an icing sugary type vibe, but oats that you get out of this one, you can really feel as you go further into the aftertaste, a bit of that kind of slightly dry, oat creamy kind of thing coming out in the middle of the palate there. So just keep an eye on that on the front half of that middle third of your palate. That's interesting. But yeah, let's focus on the fruity side of the beer then. So border region between front third and middle third of your palate, again you get a little bit of a bready build up in there, a wee bit of bread crust of course, and the base of that front third of your palate is a nice, is a more kind of smooth, white bready um, type quality there. And again, I like how this, um, I do like how this goes together, but um, yeah, the, um, the, the base of this beer is, um, is very, very nice in that sense. But um, on top of that, of course that smooth white bready base that you get you can feel that nice oily bubble where the juicy fruity esters roll their way out of the beer so for me you all of the hops are showing themselves up quite nicely in this so at the back of that front third of your palate you get a wee bit more of a kind of pungent passion fruit yeah and there's a wee bit more of a kind of pungent passion fruit there but then it mellows out very very quickly in this one so the Citra and the Galaxy are going to be the ones that give you that passion fruit, but very quickly it just juices up. So you get a bit of a more, you get a lot of juicy mango in this one for me. But then as you move towards the kind of midpoint of that front third of your palate, you get, you really start to get a little bit more of a, as I say, you get a little bit more of a kind of, um, how do we say, a, uh, um, an apricot, you got a, a bit more of a softer apricot underneath, you almost get a wee tiny touch of a papaya in there as well, which is kind of interesting. But I get quite a lot of pineapple off this. But then as you move into the front half of that front third of your palate, then there's a distinctly more kind of oily tangerine note to the beer. And that's the mosaic, of course. But then the pineapple kind of spreads over the top of that. So front half of the of that front third of your palate for me, slightly more oily, juicy tangerine, then a little bit of a more um pineapple note on top of it the, the just underneath yeah just underneath the kind of 
tangerine on the very front tip of the palette. I mean, I'm getting a bit of gas out of this beer for some reason. But yeah, um, just behind the front tip of the, the tongue there, you get a wee touch of a lemony lemony note. And I think that's the citra. That's the influence of the citra that's giving you that in there. But um, yeah, it's interesting, this one. It's got a good tropical note to it. And I think the further you go into the aftertaste too, the passion fruit comes out a bit more. You get a bit more of that tropical fruit pungency out of it. But it does work um, really nicely, this one. Yeah, I think th this beer, to me, in a lot of ways, it's quite different. It has a wee bit of that signature fermenterana softness to it. But um, it does feel quite different in a way. And I, I like this, how within the same style bracket, you can get... Um, you know, you can get some, you know, just some really interesting variations. I would love to see these guys have a go at one of the more bready, biscuity leaning West Coast IPAs. So I hope that is something they are thinking about, actually. Um, I think, you know, because these guys, their beers are very soft, and I think doing a more bready, biscuity based West Coast IPA could be a really interesting proposition for these guys, leaning towards the piney end of the spectrum if you like that could be cool but in terms of a new england ipa this one is very very nice but yeah let's round off with the mouthfeel then a bit tired when i'm filming this review so it's a little bit longer hard to get the thoughts together but um yeah lovely beer this nonetheless mm. flavor so yeah the mouthfeel of this one then it's mid-bodied, it's right in the middle of the spectrum this is a bit thicker than what we've had from fermenterano before but not madly thicker so yeah, I would say uh, mid-bodied, leaning towards the top end of mid-bodied. The carbonation for me is very, very smooth. It still feels, you know, quite clean at the same time. The Nordic water quality, as I always mention. In terms of hoppy bitterness and stuff, I think this beer is very low IBU. I mean, I would be surprised if this is more than like 25 IBUs. It could potentially even be less than that. Um, and that surprises me. This is a very, very, you know, one of these really juicy, creamy leaning IPAs, I would say. Uh, but yeah, the malt base, like I say, it's a bit softer and bready underneath. It's kind of more oaty and creamy in the middle and you do get a slight degree of sweetness off it. And then the fruity side of things, very, very juicy in my opinion. A little bit more of a kind of pungent tropical fruit to it, but then you've got a wee, a slightly more oily um, citrusy element to it as well. But I think the softer tropical fruits really come out of this one more and more. Uh, but there's a wee bit of the pungent passion fruit pushes its way out as well so yeah this is a really interesting one for me like i say slightly more creamy i think the lactose has been well handled in this beer we could say but it's another solid solid beer from fermenterana and that's what we've come to expect from them so i think that's a good place to kind of round off on this one a slightly longer review both a combination of me being tired and this beer being a little bit different so yeah we'll round it off there but yeah thank you again for watching my beer reviews until the next time please like subscribe share all the usual youtube stuff let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below let me know what your favorite beers are from fermenterana check out my social media check out theirs but uh, yeah this is a really interesting one so this is the oat cream baker an eight percent new england hazy imperial double whatever you want to call it ipa bit of lactose in it this time from Fermenterana in Strumstad to the north of Gothenburg, near the Norwegian border on the Swedish west coast. Thank you again for watching and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Lovely beer list and definitely worth 50 kroners or 5 euros of your money. Slange, skull and cheers.